Hi, everyone. This is Mary Lurson, Executive Director of the NAM Foundation, coming to you on Talking Up Music Education via Facebook Live through our wonderful friends at Enter Talk Radio. Please join us and let people know that I'm here with a wonderful guest, singer-songwriter, Vanessa Carlton. Hello. Hi, hi Vanessa. Hey. Um, we just completed a quite a grand experience downstairs where Vanessa was our featured interview, which we like to call Inside the Practice Room. So thank yeah. you for opening up the door. My pleasure. Of your creative process. Um, we are also celebrating music education and young people that are traveling on their path to having a career in music. And we ended with the Forte Tenor Trio singing Rihanna. And Tom Petty. I mean, I've never heard Tom Petty like that. Right. And it, what, what can happen when one, um, you know, embraces all the talent of the voice. And it was really exciting. So thanks for being with us. We talked a lot about um, your process as a singer-songwriter, but let's start with today. What are you working on now? You want to just give us a sneak peek of... Yeah. You're in development, really. Yeah. You know? I'm, um, I have a three-year-old daughter now. And like I said, downstairs in the ballroom, my husband, who's also a musician, is on tour. So I'm in mom mode. However, I'm still, you know, I'm actually just really diving into writing a new album, a new project. Um, so it is a combination of getting that concept together and also figuring out for the first time how to schedule that um, so you around a toddler's the schedule. Early, the, the, the previous album was pre-baby. Yeah, no, I, exactly. Mm -hmm. I had, Liberman came out when Sid was nine months. I toured it with her, actually. We all went in the van together. But it was all written, you know, actually before I even got, pre it was, the mo majority of it was written and, pre and recorded before I even got pregnant. And then I did um, record one more song while I was pregnant, and then, so it was yeah, totally pre-baby. This is my first. Right, so yeah. this is, uh, it's called postpartum songwriting. Yeah. But you could yeah. do a little blog yeah. about that yeah. maybe, right? It's like, how do you fit all this in, right? Yeah, so. it's definitely, uh, you need like a dry erase board, a calendar, you need to figure it all out. Right. Yeah. We were kind of joking with you downstairs that in the audience we could do a support group for you. <laughs> and we really could because the working mother's dilemma is yeah. uh, and that maybe um, I am, I'm not alone. Right. But maybe I, I will, will admit, though, a lot of us are probably not working as internally as a, maybe a songwriter is. I mean, it comes from a very deep place, right? Well, I hope so. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> cool. some, like I said, some songs are better than others. Right. Yeah. yeah. You want yeah. to get to a very authentic, quiet place within it, yourself, I think. You know, during the course of... Um, couple of interviews here this week and um, chatting with our so many various members of our community this word authentic is coming up a lot mm -hmm. isn't that kind of wonderful mm -hmm. I mean it's like um, in a time where we're dealing with a lot of challenges of the information that's flowing around us so fast and whatnot mm -hmm. it seems like that there's a yearning mm -hmm. for a pressing in and being authentic and a reinforcement that it's important that we are authentic is that part of your process as well right? yes and you know i mean what the truth is everything and that has to be in your art in your work um and like some of the younger students were asking me do you write for your like how do you feel about writing for your audience and i was like you never write for your, your audience only wants who you they just want you if 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 you're going to connect in a real way with with other people over some over your expression they are not interested in you trying to figure out what they want you mm -hmm. know that kind of concept um and i think that's something that people kind of like get into when they're have dreams of being famous or the pop world or the radio getting on the radio it's like that's always i think a lot of almost every artist probably has fallen into that weird not every artist but but many fall into that weird chapter in their writing where they're like, wait, should I try and write something that I think is going to be a huge thing? I mean, it never works, in my, in my experience. So. Important words just spoken here. I mean, that's very important because <laughs> I think, you know, there's a lot of impressions about how, how to get there. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, and the, the um, popular culture is telling us there's a certain the path looks a certain way, mm -hmm. right? 
But maybe it's more of a shovel and a spade, and you're digging and you're chipping away. Right? It's something. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, not not to plug anybody's book, but I'm reading a very interesting book right now um, that talks that that has a lot to do with authenticity. It's called Party of One, and it it uh, is full of research about how we how we all think we should be feeling relative what the popular culture is telling oh, us. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But actually, that the majority of people, it's based on really sound research and you know, in a lot of insight, is the majority of people are really pretty comfortable finding their authentic their authenticity, or that's really what they're seeking. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, keep talking about it, Vanessa, in your music mm -hmm. and in your artistry, because I think there's it's re reinforcing a lot of people. Yeah, well, do you know to yeah. do their own thing? Yeah. Um, as I read about you, I, I kind of stopped on one place. You talked about that you've read a lot of Joseph Campbell, mm -hmm. the, all the great books that he wrote about archetype and myth. Mm -hmm. When did you read that, and mm -hmm. where were you in your journey, and what did that mean to you? Well, I read it, I read it in high school, but then I revisited when I was working on um, an album called Rabbits on the Run, and it was it's the power of myth was a book that was like really woven through that album i'm trying to now remember um you see see the, joseph campbell not only breaks down archetypes um and I like right now actually i'm reading um the power of the feminine divine the the goddess book that he wrote um but he he really has some interesting things to say about the human brain and the human and human cravings. And um, I thought that, you know, particularly for that project, it, it totally fit, you know, what, what he was saying and what that album ended up being. So, yeah, like I was, I was saying earlier too, you know, there's times I think it's really important as a writer to keep your curiosity up and start, exposing yourself to other artists and other genres and different books and things that um, are going to add layers to whatever you're, whatever you're doing or maybe what lead you to a new space mm -hmm. creatively. I know when I encountered his work, and of course many people maybe saw the wonderful Bill Moyer series. Have you were ever get to see that? I haven't. You should pull it up on PBS. He did a whole series of interviews with Joseph Campbell. Oh, maybe I have seen it's a yeah. collection of stuff. And yeah. hearing him speak mm -hmm. in narrative about all the deep stuff that's in the book, but yeah. hearing his voice, I don't know. It just kind of was so maybe as especially as a woman too. Mm -hmm. There was something just very calming about it. He's so observant. That yeah. there's something basic here, right? That we can tap into that. Is you know outside of again sort of where how we're told to be, mm -hmm. where happiness looks like, mm -hmm. right? The pathway to something or other, but it's it's really kind of party of one, right? It's sort of yes. We, spend we all just want to be it. heard in a way, you know. But, um, I I agree. I think he's he's a great teacher. He doesn't even mean to be, but right. you know, he really. So is put that on wonderful. your. Um, your iPad viewing I will. Thank when you. the baby's taking a nap. Yes. Or preschool really helps, by the way. She's in preschool now. Oh, it really oh, helps, God. doesn't it? Yeah. I sleep basically while she's in. Yeah, I slept. I, I should be working, but I just I go slept back and to sleep. vacuumed. I remember <laughs> I slept in, because that was the only time that. Yeah. Yeah. So just, just, just text me if you need other. All right. Thank preschool, you. I absolutely will. Right. Play day. You are so sweet. All right. I know. <laughs> Believe me, we want you to keep writing all this good stuff. So. um we all know you for the piano riff that launched a million piano lessons. Has anyone ever said that, used that phrase with you? You know, yeah. yeah. And my mom is a piano teacher. I mean, I just can't tell you how over the moon she is about that. Yeah. You know. But, it, you know, it, it, it was, we need those moments, too, when someone says, this is, this is cool, right? Piano's hard. It's rigorous. It requires, but it's cool, right? Yeah. It, it's a and you, it was it your first and only instrument? Did you play other instruments yeah. along the way? Um, I mean, I could play a really horrible "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star" on the violin, kind of like squeak it out there. I can play a couple Christmas songs on the flute. Um, flute, really? Did you study flute in school? I studied flute. Yeah, you yeah. did. I did loved... you know that I'm a flutist. Oh, really? 
We won't play together though, because I don't play <laughs> I loved, anymore. I loved it. Um, Did you love it? Do yeah. you still play? No, I still have my flute though from band. I do too. It needs to be repaired. It really needs. Mine yeah. needs to be repaired too. Um, well, maybe there'll be a reunion. We'll think. We'll do. We could do a flute duo. I'm not sure that like. We'd have you know, to practice. it's a niche. It's a niche. We'd have genre, to practice. Flute duo. You know what they say about two flutes? What's worse than two flutes? Two harps. Really? <laughs> I can see two harps sounding really good. It's the tuning thing. Oh, is it? You know, it's tough to keep. Oh, that's the interesting. Two. The overtones are so. I have to hear that. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> I don't know if you'd want to hear it, but no, I'm just teasing. Yeah, We're really, I'm curious. Yeah. Do you play? You play flute in school? Yeah, I, so, uh, fourth grade. So school was music was available to you in school. So yep. all this great grounding was happening with your mother and piano lessons at home. And then, and where did you go to school? What, what city, state, sort of? I went to school in, well, Glens Bay, New York, then Port Jervis, New York. So in the then, New York suburbs, sort of. Then Delaware Valley. Well, I'm from Pennsylvania. Those okay. were right across the border. And then the Del Delaware Valley School in Milford. And there was school music there. And Yay. yeah, and that's a public school when they, yeah. I, I, that was, I was in choir, in chorus. Um, it's a little violin, a little sprinkling of violin. The violin, I don't know where that came into play. I think that was, well, my dad, my dad plays the fiddle. Um, he's in the bluegrass. So, um, yeah, I had a moment with the violin. But. And then flute in school band program. And flute in school Bravo. and choir in school. So that was like supporting all this along the way, yep. right? Did you go to uh, post post uh, post high school? Did you go to college, or did go right into songwriting? I took a few courses at Columbia Barnard, um, and the, for like a year. Yeah, and then, and then you followed. Never the graduated muse. though. Yeah, and then you followed. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. There was enough, and that happened quickly, right? You were twenty-one. Well, because I got a thousand miles. I got happened. a publishing deal. Years before that song came out, um, when I was 19, or two years before that song came out. And then I signed a record deal when I was 20. And then. That's fast, right? Yeah. Out yeah. of the shoot, right? That was, yeah. Yeah. And you reflected a little bit on, on that happening really fast. A little early. I mean, look, yeah. it's nice. I, I could buy my own couch when I was. Which is huge. That was a big deal. That's a big deal. I mean, deal. that couch was like nine hundred dollars, <laughs> and I was eighteen years old. Yeah, that's so a that big was deal. a big deal. Um, right. But yeah, you know, that was whew, yeah. We all yeah. had different yeah. reactions to things like that. I guess. But then you had this. Um, you told us that you left the formal side of the industry in terms of being aligned with a label. A, ma a uh, major. The the major label, I call it the system. You know, it's so different now because of how music is put out there and with streaming services and how the radio has changed. And, you know, the whole game of the record labels is completely different now. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I, you know, wasn't really meant to be, you know, it's tricky. I think manage, finding a great manager is really key to this whole process. But I think maybe I just wasn't cut out for to be, um, an artist with that kind of major label pressure um, and sort of you become the thing with that is then you become like the pop piano girl and then you're kind of or at least I was early on and then they expect well what's next is it going to be it needs to be the same thing so you fit into their slot um, but also you have and that's partly my fault where I didn't have the I wasn't self-aware enough and I didn't have the plan that you know, for myself that was strong enough where I was able to really communicate to them, like, actually, that's not the direction I want to go. Um, so, you know, organically and naturally, we I am now in um, a place that is, like, totally supportive of the type of projects that I want to be a part of. And for me, that meant leaving the major label system. Um, and I still have a lot of friends, actually, at Interscope. That was where I was, and they're cool. And Jimmy Ivey was amazing. I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy signed me. Um, and now I'm on Dine Alone Records, and I'm working on my third album for them. So Great. it all so – or a second album. Yeah, my second album for them. Sorry. So your, you know, gratitude is part of, of what that was? Mm-hmm. You have this. Absolutely. You have this moment in the 
flexibility of the current technology that allows for this sort of wide open range. Totally. And you'll see what comes next. Right? Yeah, yeah, you can, yeah. you have a lot of, I think artists right now, musicians have more freedom than ever because, you know, you're just, you're not, there's no like radio, there's no set radio styles or something that will lure or lure someone off track where you're like, well, you have to sound like, you have to write a song that sounds like this, you can get on that station or this or that. I just feel like all the lines are blurred, which is really cool. Which we just heard like with our wonderful tenor trio, Forte. Here they are this last year. One just finished a stint at the Metropolitan Opera and the Merry Widow. Another one was just coming off of a major operatic um, performance at Covent Garden. He's playing in Phantom on the Opera on the broad Broadway. Josh right. and his brother Zach are all over the YouTube. And we've, it's just, and, and mm -hmm. this remarkable voices. You know, it's a time for go, go express yourself with your authentic talent, whatever mm -hmm. it is. So, well, you've been a wonderful example, not only of creativity, songwriting, using this new pathway of artistry in terms of marketing and outreach, but you've also are very philanthropic and giving. And um, recently did something, let's just repeat again, recently did something for the folks, uh, a family that was affected by the hurricanes in Houston. Mm -hmm. And you just saw mm -hmm. a picture on, the, on CNN and said, I need to yeah. help. Yeah, it's amazing, the internet. Like you can actually help. If you see a situation that you want to help change, you can make a connection like in that moment. Um, and that was, that was cool. I mean, Twitter can be actually used for good. Right. <laughs> yes. um, Remember Vanessa, you can quote Vanessa, Twitter can be yeah. actually used for good. Yeah, yes. I actually even met my husband on Twitter. Oh. <laughs> I mean, kind of. Right. Kind of. Um, but yeah, the, this, um, I was able to get a piano to a family that lost their piano in the flood. Um, that was, that was really cool to meet, you know, just now I know Eric, you know, we have each other's number and he's rebuilding his house and, you know, it's really, the world becomes very, very small on the internet. You can like really connect with people. So mm -hmm. it was cool. You can connect when you're you have a heart that's open to want to make a difference. Totally. Um, right? The other thing I've been working on, which I'm going to go more public with it in a couple of months, um, if they want to renew the program next year. But um, there is, you know, KIPP schools around oh, the country. Yep. I started a little dance program at a KIPP school in Nashville called KIPP Kirkpatrick, and we raised enough to get these kids dance class during school hours once a week um plus and i don't know if they know this yet but they're probably not gonna listen to this um they have costume you know they we got we raised enough to cover um, to get shoes and costumes for the end of the year performance and um i'm hoping that then i can raise enough this summer for it to go for a full year next year and just get these kids dancing because I, I this is partially what you know, why you're here and what we're doing but part of the school day can be this moment of expression um, and almost like meditation for the kids. And I just think that's so powerful, you know. So. Yeah, we were doing some work here in Anaheim and I saw a video that they produced about children telling all of us adults why music in the school was so important to them. And it was one of those, you know, lump in your throat oh, moments. God. Yeah. Of a little boy coming on the video and just, you know, so honestly, honestly and innocently but mostly honestly saying it means so much to me to have a class in school where my feelings matter so much Aww. you know? know now it's not that they don't matter in math and science we know teachers are loving and caring but there 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 is a connection right? yeah i mean it's, it's just expression yeah their, their bodies their so you know they and i just kind of went well you know i gotta go home now that <laughs> <laughs> my job is done you know and that was on tuesday mm -hmm. when we started off the nam show so that's that's a beautiful thing really yeah yeah and your work vanessa is a beautiful thing and your intentionality about it and all you're giving to all of us um as i said you've you've contributed to the soundtrack of our lives and it really means a thank lot thank you to us. i'll continue on continue on even if my three-year-old's not at all into any of my recent work. Yeah. Uh, also, we social. I'm, I'm really just trying to win her over. Yes. <laughs> but remember, <laughs> what really matters is she's really into you as mom. Yes, she um, wants me. It's, well, it's, I can do. 
that's figuring out how to do both and that is what every mom you know where the moms that have to drop their kids at daycare and they go to work and then pick the i mean mothers are incredible i can't yeah. even believe what moms pull off yeah. so and you're one of them um, now yeah, we're all trying to figure it right. out in our You're own on the way. line now, and we're yeah. all there with you. Yes. That's the other part yes. of it. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Vanessa. My we, pleasure. We hope to stay in close touch. We'll yes. be in Nashville in June, and maybe we'll, we'll, we'll have a way to rendezvous when yep. we're there. I'll be there. And uh, your working mom coaching team is at the line for you. Oh, so good. So not I'll worry. Need, I'll need to consult. Yes. Okay, okay. And, um, and to all of you who have joined us here at Talking at Music Education, third day of the NAM show, Thank you for being us with us at InterTalk Radio and being part of us at Talking Up Music Education, a podcast of the NAM Foundation.